The very first item that Link finds in the original Legend of Zelda for NES is the sword. So it seems appropriate to make that the first item for us to implement in this brand new world. To get Link swinging a sword, there's two main parts to consider. The sword itself needs to stab out in front of Link, but also Link needs to change his stance briefly over to this attack sprite. As long as we're able to do both of these things for all four directions, we'll be in good shape. I'm going to start things off by working on the stance change. Whenever I press the attack key, I want Link to do his little attacking animation. If you slowed down the gameplay, you can look closely to see that there's only two images that go into this animation. He lunges forward, then retracts back. One of these images is actually part of the walk cycle animation. Taking a quick look at the sprite sheet I made for this game, Link walks using these two images on every row. Then to attack for that direction, we're simply going to use these two images. Pretty easy. When I trigger this animation to happen in-game, this is what it looks like. Then, if I just speed it up a bit, it looks just like the original game. Step 1 is complete. Now all we need to do is add the sword itself. Let's start this process off pretty simple. First, I want to spawn the sword at Link's position whenever the attack button is pressed. Additionally, I want this sword sprite to rotate to face the same direction as Link. Essentially, when the sword is spawned into the game, it'll read Link's direction property, convert it to radians, and then rotate the sword image to match that radian value, resulting in what you see here. Of course, we don't want our sword to just sit motionless on top of Link like this. If we reference the original game, Link stabs the sword out in front of him, then retracts it back, all very quickly. To do this, our sword is going to have three different states. The stab, where the sword moves out from Link's body. The pause, where it briefly remains at the peak distance. And then the retract, where it returns back to Link. Keep in mind that these states need to work for any given direction. So when the sword is spawned, we'll give it a new direction vector. One that matches the same direction that Link is facing. For the first state, the stab, the sword is going to move in the same direction. Then, once the pause state ends, we'll simply flip that direction vector around, and it'll go back the same way that it came. On my first attempt, it looked like this. It's a bit exaggerated, of course, but you can clearly see all three states in action. Then, after lining it up a bit better and speeding things up, we're left with our final product. Link can stab out his sword nice and quick, just like the original game. As I mentioned in the previous video, I'm interested in making this new game a bit more unique by pulling in elements from Breath of the Wild. In the next video, we'll be implementing the new weapon switching system, allowing Link to change between any of the weapons he currently has within his inventory. If you'd be interested in checking out the code for this game, all of it is available on GitHub. You can find the link in the description. And if you'd like to follow along with the progress on this game, please subscribe.